What is up guys, it's your boy. Does anyone have enough to upgrade this turret? Cacus, and today we have the ultimate guide for the brand new Onslaught game mode added to Destiny 2 within the Into the Light free DLC. In this video, we're gonna be going over everything you need to know about Onslaught, as well as a bunch of tips and recommended loadouts to help you dominate this new game mode, even on Legend difficulty, all the way up to round 50. And so, let's get started. Now first things first, when you select Onslaught, you actually have two different nodes. On the left is Onslaught Playlist. This will throw you in at wave 1 to a random map, you go to wave 10, fight the boss, and then it ends. On the right you have the proper Onslaught mode, where it goes all the way up to round 50. But keep in mind, you can actually specifically select the map you want, as well as your difficulty. So if you have map preferences, for example, me and my teammates really didn't like Moth Yards, so we would specifically specifically avoid that to make farming more efficient. Just keep that in mind. Now, when you actually load in, you're going to have to secure the defense point, so kill a few enemies and then the ADU will spawn. The entire time, you have to keep this ADU alive, so if enemies get close, they will attack it, and if the health gets to zero, you just lose and need to restart. But after this first ADU spawns, you're then going to have the opportunity to build some defenses, and everyone on your team will start with around 2,000 scrap. The currency you get while playing Onslaught. At this point, you can start purchasing your defenses with said scrap. And you're probably wondering which defenses are best, which ones will give you the biggest bang for your buck, or I should say smack for your scrap, and in that case, we have three different kinds of defenses. We have trip mines, we have turrets, and we have decoys. And overall, I'm not the biggest fan of trip mines. You keep buying them, they explode, they kill some enemies, and that's kind of about it. They can certainly be decent, however, I feel like you get more value for your scrap when buying decoys and turrets because they will last indefinitely as long as they're not destroyed. So you buy something on round one, if it's not destroyed, it will still be there. Like that turret will still be there on wave 50 killing enemies. So a single turret upgraded all the way to uh, level three is going to be slaying out on overall like dozens if not hundreds of enemies in the entire span of your game. And I don't think trip mines give you that value. And the same thing goes for the decoys. A well-placed decoy can distract, again, dozens if not hundreds of enemies and give you a massive advantage in the grand scheme of the game. Now, initially, I like to invest in turrets. Even at level 1, they're going to be able to slay out on red bars, and when fully upgraded, they can absolutely chunk even yellow bars on legend difficulty, guys. And often when you're off doing alternate objectives that we'll talk about in a sec, random enemies will escape back to the ADU, and your turrets can handle them. Now, after getting a few turrets up and running, I'm going to start getting decoys. However, very importantly, and this is going to apply to both turrets and decoys, decoys, the placement matters most. And here's what I'm talking about, guys. When you're buying turrets, you want to actually have them in a place where they have clear and easy sight lines over where the enemies are actually spawning. This is an example on the Vostok map of a very good turret placement. Enemies are coming from, you know, all over here, you're in a wide open area, that turret is going to be absolutely chunking enemies the entire time. This is an example of a terrible turret placement. You're down here, what even sight lines are there? I guess if the enemies get right next to your ADU, the turret can start to work. Like, I would buy decoys over this bad turret placement. But again, placement matters for decoys arguably even more. This is an example of a great decoy placement. Right here at the top of the stairs, all the enemies are going to have to go past this decoy to get to the ADU. So they're going to stop, they're going to attack the decoy, they're going to be distracted, we can kill them before they get to the ADU. This is an example of a terrible decoy placement. It's behind the ADU. The enemies are literally going to have to like skip the ADU, which they're not programmed to. Maybe it'll distract a few guys, but most of them will just be attacking the ADU, completely ignoring this decoy. So again, pick your turret and decoy placements wisely, and there's not a right answer to like, buy turrets first and then decoys. 
buy the best placements for either one first and invest early. Decoys upgraded all the way to level three that turn into a golden shacks. They really do a good job at distracting enemies as well as level three turrets can really crank. So as you're going through uh, your waves after you have built those initial defenses, you're going to start to collect scrap. Now, this is an important tip. As you kill certain enemies, more powerful enemies, saboteurs, they're gonna drop those balls called the ADU batteries. Now you can pick these up and throw them at the ADU and the tracking is crazy. As long as you throw them in the general direction, they will like float all the way to the ADU. And then when they hit it, they will heal the ADU if it has taken a bit of damage. But this is super important. It also gives you scrap. So when you see ADU heal plus 15, it's also giving you 15 scrap. And I see a ton of teams when their ADU is at full health, they just ignore the batteries because they're like, oh, we don't need any healing, but you're missing out on a ton of extra scrap. And how many times have you been only 50 or 100 points away from getting that next upgrade? It's probably because you're somewhat ignoring those ADU batteries. Now, something else you absolutely want to be doing is the bonus objectives. They pop up once every few waves, and they're generally not too difficult. You know, essentially collect gambit moats, uh, shoot pyramid relics. Sometimes you need to go somewhere and destroy a certain somewhat powerful ad. That's generally the more difficult one. But when you do get them done, you get a heavy ammo crate that all your teammates can use. Just keep in mind, the first person who activates it will activate a timer, so everyone better be close. And they will fully refill your heavy ammo. And this leads us into our first loadout tip, guys. Uh, your heavy matters a ton when you are doing these bonus objectives. And the best one I've found, honestly, is going to be the Dragon's Breath. This rocket launcher is something a lot of people have because it was part of the season's pass. It's part of this season's pass, actually. And oh my goodness, this thing is phenomenal at ad clearing. If you are playing Onslaught, you will notice enemies literally spawning in one place over and over again. You put a fully charged Dragon's Breath round into that spawn and you are just going to nuke everything. And then when you do have more powerful yellow bar mini bosses appear, the Dragon's Breath is great against those too. And certainly something that you should be bringing in for those wave clearing rounds. However, keep in mind, even on Legend difficulty, there is no loadout restrictions. So what you're actually gonna see us do in the background gameplay is that I am using the Dragon's Breath for ad clearing the whole time, and then just before the boss fight, there's always a rally flag, I switched to the Galahorn. So we switch to more DPS rockets, and then once we're done killing the boss, we switch back. And that is a huge tip as well, do not be afraid to switch between ad clearing and boss killing loadouts. However, the one other thing that your loadouts should account for is the rift wave. So wave 6, 16, 26, etc. is always going to be you running a spark as you can see right here. And there's a couple of things you can do to absolutely cheese the crap out of this. Number one easiest thing is that if you have a hunter, make sure they're running something with invisibility and then they can just go invis as you can see through this whole section. You just need to slam at the end and all the ads will die. So you can really just skip this so easily. Another thing that we've done to cheese it is if you have a Banner of War Titan and they make a tangle, well they can chuck that tangle, grapple to it, and literally yeet across this entire hallway and then just slam it at the end. Another easy way to cheese it. And if you don't have either of those things, uh, then the most general way to do this is blinding grenades. Blinding grenades are going to be great in general for Onslaught because of the add density, but you can really just chuck a few blinding grenades at these enemies and for the most part still run past all of them. But let's continue with some more loadout recommendations. What stuff is cracked in Onslaught? So that massive enemy density, you can use that to your advantage. Stuff that replenishes your abilities and supers for getting kills is going to be very easy to activate. And a great example is right here what you're seeing with Phoenix Protocol Wells. Pop a well, 
you will 100% get it back. There are so many ads, like one ally shooting a dragon's breath into a spawn point is going to give you everything you need. Another example is actually, you can see our teammate here using the Orpheus rigs. So not only is he going to get invisibility for running the spark, but he was able to use uh, his tether like multiple times in a wave. And you may be thinking, well, those all got nerfed. They only regenerate 50% of your super back and then they stop but that's not a big deal when all three of your teammates are spamming their supers all producing orbs and again a single dragon's breath shot will clear out 30 ads the amount of super regeneration you can start chaining together is actually absurd However, ability spam is also a very viable option. You can see me here using these Sun Bracers gauntlets and I get one melee kill, which is pretty easy to do. And then I start chucking nonstop solar grenades into all these enemy spawns. And I basically have 100% heat rises and it's just ridiculous what you can do with this build as well. Now, another incredible option that isn't so ability or super spammy, but it's the Banner of War Titan. That health regeneration is incredible. Your melees absolutely slap. You can use that tether melee to melt bosses, as you can see right here. And then also, you're generating a ton of tangles that are great for clearing adds too. But moving on from there to some more weapon recommendations, again, the Dragon's Breath was goaded and so was a Blinding Grenade Launcher, but you're also going to need to potentially deal with all three different types of champions depending on what enemies you're facing. So, the Zayuli's Bane hand cannon was amazing. You'll see a lot of that in the background gameplay. It's solar, so you get all of those solar seasonal artifact perks, uh, but because it's a hand cannon, it can deal with unstopped champions. Now, overloads are generally not too bad because if you are using rockets, you can put on overload rocket launcher rounds as a seasonal artifact perk, but you can also use something like the summoner uh, as an auto rifle that's solar if you want to shore up your defenses against those overload champions, uh, but also guys, for dealing with those barrier champions... You could run something like the Heliocentric right here as a sidearm to pierce those shields, but honestly, we just kind of dealt with them. Like, we didn't have anything specifically for dealing with that type of champion. We were just getting Radiant so much, thanks to our Solar Xylee's Bane and other stuff, that being Radiant would allow you to pierce those barrier champion shields, and we just never found a problem with that. It's not the most consistent, but keep in mind... You know, you are going to have to deal with all the other ads as well, and sometimes you got to make sacrifices in your loadouts. Now, some other things I want to shout out. First of all, a good sniper. Like, one guy on your team with a good snipe rifle not only is very useful against the boss, if you're just short of killing them with rocket launcher DPS, you're going to be using stuff like snipers, but also if you're versing Hive, these shriekers spawn and they're so annoying, having a sniper can really help with these guys. Another great thing actually turned out to be the scatter signal. Because, yeah, this thing still cranks. We kind of forgot about how good this thing was because it came out at the beginning of the season, but holy crap, you can take down yellow bars and even mini bosses and heck, bosses with the scatter signal PvE god roll using controlled burst. But even something like a heritage shotgun, generally you want someone with like a DPS a special just because you are versing so many yellow bars, so many mini bosses in those later waves. Like you need to burst them down and if you are having problems with heavy ammo, it can become an issue. And then guys, overall, I'm just going to give you one more big tip and that is you should absolutely be doing legend difficulty but you absolutely do not need to get all the way to wave 50. At wave 50, as you saw, you only get like one additional chest and maybe this chest has additional rewards, but we didn't get any of the shiny weapons from this, so it's not like it's a guaranteed chest or anything like that. And instead of struggling all the way to wave 50, if you can just get to wave 10 or wave 20 on legend, just restart and keep doing that. That is going to be a hyper efficient farm because getting to wave 20 on legend is like getting to wave 40 on normal because you get double the amount of chests for every boss kill. So again, like 
doing legend, getting those double chests is so important, but you really don't need to get all the way up to wave 50 for it to be efficient to farm. Guys, that is going to be it for the video. Hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.